Guys, joining me today on Oral Sessions, the artist known as Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> How are you? It's so good to see you. Long time no see, yeah. How much do you miss me? Ah, uh, how much? <laughs> how do I describe my Japanese? Goi <laughs> bai. Does that mean very little? Ah, uh, no, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know I miss being able to see you and talking about ramen. We'll be talking about lots of ramen today. Ramen is spread in the U.S., right? Everywhere. Even a fake Japanese restaurant sub ramen. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best ramen that you've had in the United States? So. A lot of uh, Japanese ramen kind of artists already came to United States. They opened their own restaurant everywhere. So especially Los Angeles, California, and New York. You can find the real deal. And you do the real deal because you are like the king of making your own ramen broth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I did last year uh, during pandemic, so lockdown. Are you not doing it anymore? Took over 10 hours. What do you put in it? What's like your key to making the best ramen? I wanted to make uh, original pork broth I made from uh, pork skull. Oh, really? Okay, so where do you go to get the pork skull? I went to local uh, butcher. I asked, uh, do you have pork skull? <laughs> <laughs> What'd they say? What the hell we have? <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's got to use it. Then I tried to cook inside of my house, but my wife said no. <laughs> hell no. Why? Because it just, it smells up the whole house? Yes. So she knows, uh, she came from uh, Kyushu. Kyushu Island is uh, famous for the tonkotsu ramen. Tonkotsu is the pork broth. Yeah. Uh, then she knows the so smell. Then, so I cook the pork broth at the uh, backyard. <laughs> That's all right. At least you're in Florida. The weather's nice. You can sit outside and cook the pork broth. During the pandemic, so we need to cook every day. I cook the ramen every day. <laughs> I love that. You can come to my house and do that. I won't kick you out. I won't put you in the backyard. You can stay <laughs> in my house and do it. John's used to me doing that. Unless I cook stuff with a lot of oil, if I like deep fry something and that stinks up the house, that one sucks. But yeah, you can cook ramen at my house any day. Um, what else have you been cooking? What else is like your go-to when you're cooking? Do you know yakiniku? Mm -mm. So Japanese style Korean barbecue, that's complicated. Also, Italian cuisine, tripa like uh, intestine, it's hard to find in United States. That's what I miss when I lived in New York. And when I lived in Toronto, it was easier to find certain foods like that. But when you're out in the suburbs, it can be really hard to find different like cuts of meat. And especially like if you're looking for like anything from like snout to tail and the insides, it's hard to get because nobody in America wants to eat that. I found uh, a beef intestine at the Walmart. Because uh, Mexican people eat, uh, how do I say, menudo, the soup of guts, right? So I bought the uh, intestine, then I cut and clean up and washed a lot, then I prepare to eat. What has become your favorite American dish? What is American dish? I, like, I don't know, like a hamburger, a hot dog, <laughs> a sandwich, a BLT? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me, oh, American tra traditional food, it's pizza. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, depends. Got to give that one to the Italians, right? I don't know. So what is typical American traditional food? Like a biscuit with gravy? Yeah, that's one. That's one. Uh, like chicken wings, fries, pancakes. I love all that stuff. Um, I was watching your Chronicle that you shot with Joey. And when you guys stopped and got like the barbecue, when you guys were in like Texas or maybe you were in like New Orleans or Memphis, something like that. But watching you guys stop and get all the food, I'm glad that you brought that into that documentary. The people need to know. Do people understand what a great chef you are? I don't think they understand to the to the level. Yeah, just uh, just a hobby. So I cook for just for myself or friends. Everybody like, hey, Shane, open the ramen restaurant. No, pain us. <laughs> Do you think that you would maybe do something like that when you're not wrestling anymore? I just want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> what do
do you want to do when you're done wrestling? Now, I try to think. So what I do after the wrestling, so since day one, uh, before becoming wrestler, my family asked me, hey, what do you do after wrestling? So 19 years, I'm thinking. <laughs> Well, your mom was always like a supporter of you getting into wrestling, right? Or at least she wanted you to go to university to get into the wrestling. You started watching wrestling with your grandmother, right? Yes. What would you guys watch together? We watched the uh, New Japan Wrestling Friday night uh, from 8 p.m. Uh, they have wrestling show on TV. Your dad really wanted you to play baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he start he, when he start to watch so baseball, I escape to the grandma's room. <laughs> and start watch yeah, wrestling show. Did your dad like wrestling at all? No, not at all. But he just wanted you to be like an athlete, right? Yeah, but he only uh, he only like for baseball. When I started wrestling, I uh, won the. Uh, state championship then i took them to the uh national championship like a national high school game then my parents finally uh, accept wrestling they could see you in your singlet ready to go yeah <laughs> okay so when i was getting ready to uh to do this interview with you i was reading some of your book oh yeah yeah i read some of your book i was watching your chronicle doing a little deep digging and were you a big crybaby yeah, I was. Why? What happened? Two older sisters always bury me. My sister's friend tried to bury me. I always fight with older person. That's why I don't know. <laughs> I was too nice still. Then you start fighting everybody. So I thought I'm I'm like a woman. So I want to be a man. Oh, you wanted to be very masculine. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I started. So. I was interested in uh, martial arts to be strong and to be a man. Also, I'm a big fan of uh, ninja and samurai. Finally, I found the wrestling. And then you felt like you connected with your masculine side. You found how you could be more of a man. So wrestler do matches almost every day. So that makes me a tough, I think, then I should be a wrestler. Uh, but you were also a big fan of Jackie Chan. Yes. He was a, a really early inspiration for you. I watched uh, Jackie Chan's movie since when I was in elementary school because uh, he was very, very popular in Asia. Uh, also, the lot of uh, Asian, so Asian and Japanese action movie stars like uh, Hiroyuki Sanada and Sunny Chiba. And you know, so they are my idol. So maybe that's something that you do after wrestling. Maybe you can be an action star. I need to learn how to act. <laughs> also, I need to speak correct English. <laughs> Your English is good, though. You speak English despite what we had to do on TV. How difficult was it for you to learn English? Because when you first came to America, it was the first time going to the LA dojo for New Japan, right? You spoke no English at all? For me, Japanese start to study English uh, from junior high school. Okay. But all the teachers are Japanese. So the teachers can speak perfectly or not. And the teacher teaches British English. Oh, okay. When I came to United States, I didn't know what is silent letters. Oh, yeah. That's, that can be confusing. So I so tried to get water, but uh, I couldn't pronounce water. <laughs> oh man. I mean, it always blows my mind though. When anyone from another country comes to America or comes to Canada and like, you just have to be submerged in the language. So the fact, I mean, we're speaking English right now, you speak just fine English, but I imagine it's got to be so difficult coming to a new country and trying to figure all that out. Were you buying books or like, how were you learning? I always had a dictionary at that time. So we didn't have uh, like an iPhone. Yeah, that was 2002. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't get the translation apps. So wrestling is body communication and wrestling is universal language. So when we make matches, I need to know the moves 
Crossline, Punches, Kickers. Kinshasa. <laughs> Kinshasa, <not yet. laughs> And a lot of uh, friends uh, helped me to speak uh, English. Who helps you? Who are your friends that help you? Uh, Rocky Romero. And yeah, I, I used to live uh, with uh, Brian Danielson. Did he help you with your English at all, Brian? My English and Ryoto Machida's English was sucked. <laughs> okay. We ask Brian, please judge us. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so like which is English was sex. <laughs> Whose was worse? Uh, mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you get nervous if you have a promo in WWE? Yes, still. Nowadays, they only uh, give, give me a short line. For example, like a so famous joke. I don't know because I didn't grow up in the U.S., well, that's the hard, hard things for me. Well, I feel like you do pretty well with still having like good comedic timing. You say funny things. Like I feel like comedy still comes through in your English. I mean, when you and I were doing the back and forth, and you're like, no, speak English. I mean, that was a really funny segment that people loved that. Yeah. Um, okay. So you grow up with a lot of women. Do you think that that led into a lot of your fashion influences because you're a very fashionable man. Oh, thank you. One of my older sisters went to the uh, school of like uh, making clothes. And Michael Jackson was a big influence for you as well, right? I mean, with from his fashion to the way his body moves. I felt so his atmosphere is like a master of martial arts. Very calm, no muscles. So he's moving uh, like control gravity. He is the fastest guy in the like a stage and the best dancer on stage. But other dancers has like a huge muscles and muscular. That's why. So he's so his atmosphere like martial arts master. Like the dance master, martial arts master, they kind of fall under the same category as far as body movement. Yeah. Huh. And then his fashion, his fashion was a big one for you. I mean, you got, you've got all that red leather that screams Michael Jackson to me. So red color is one of my lucky color. Red's a good color. It's like a feel good energy color. Yeah. 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 What, how, how long have you, have you always just worn red? I mean, you do blue sometimes. Uh, blue and uh, I made white for uh, WrestleMania for this year, but I couldn't use. <laughs> and, yeah, so yeah, now trying to use uh, other colors now. You should do some face paint. Do you ever do face paint? Once in Mexico and Japan. I feel like I could see you doing that just with everything being so eccentric and over the top. Was that something you always kind of had in mind that you wanted to get to more of that theatrical side? I mean, even when you first debuted in New Japan, you didn't just wear the black trunks and the black boots, right? I didn't wear uh, like a traditional, like a uh, young lion style. So my debut is kind of on big matches. I thought I should wear something different to make uh, myself uh, looking bigger. Okay, so when you became the uh, the youngest heavyweight champion in New Japan, how much pressure was on your shoulders to kind of carry that promotion during that time? Actually, I didn't have no experience. I just needed to do that they want. Did you feel that a lot of people were jealous of you or maybe had a bit of a problem with you at the time because of that? Yes. I felt I don't have friends in this company. Oh, man. Who were some of your friends? Did you have any allies at all while you were in that time? I had a friend outside of New Japan. I had the experience of martial arts. I already trained at the uh, MMA gym in Tokyo. I mean, fighter was my friend. So not through wrestling then, not, at New, not through New Japan? At that time. but the, At that time, yeah. Now, a lot of friends in New Japan still. Let's talk about you and Brock Lesnar in New Japan. Do you want to have a rematch with Brock if he were to show back up in WWE? I'm not really sure where he's at contractually or what his deal is, but if he shows back up in WWE, do we get to see a Shinsuke Nakamura Brock Lesnar rematch? 
if I have the opportunity, of course I want. What was your first experience like with Brock? I was young. He was young. I don't know. Hard to tell <laughs> with him sometimes. Probably, yeah. Seemed like there was like a, a lack of respect from Brock in New Japan, right? He won the title and then went away and, and took it with him. What was the reaction from everybody at New Japan when that happened? I'm professional. I'm going to get you in a shoot fight with Brock after this. Yeah, I should do that. <laughs> yeah, I should do that. No, I'm an old. <laughs> you must obviously still watch New Japan today, right? Yeah, so, so still, so a lot of friends in New Japan. Who do you have your eye on there that you think is a, a really big, that will be a big star? I think still Okada is the one. Very handsome man, that Okada. <laughs> Very handsome. I'm, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> you were in his wedding, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Okada and uh, uh, Okada and now uh, Kota Ibushi, uh, he needs, so he it's going to be a little more bigger, I think. Yeah. You think he'll be a bigger star or he needs to get bigger? So bigger star, I mean. Okay. Finally, he uh, trying to uh, show his responsibility. Okay, so New Japan recently uh, merged the heavyweight title with the intercontinental title. What, do you, what are your thoughts about that? They made a new uh, IWGP world heavyweight or something like that, right? Yeah. So, so no more... IWGP heavyweight, no more IWGP intercontinental title. It makes my record uh, forever. Ah, that's cool. So I am forever youngest IWGP heavyweight champion. Yeah. Do you do you like the idea of having less championships? Yeah, already they have IWGP heavyweight in uh, US. Yeah. And never. And My husband is U.S. right now. Oh, so your husband have match against Nagata. Very interesting to watch. Nagata-san is uh, one of my mentor in Japanese wrestling custom. Experienced wrestler have young boy. So I was uh, Nagata's young boy. Oh wow! I prepared his like a wrestling gear. I washed his wrestling gear. I went to the night town with Nagata. So as his boy. <laughs> <laughs> you would walk out with the ice packs? Yeah, yeah. So I got to meet Nagata a couple of weeks ago out in LA while they were doing a show out there. But yeah, he seems lovely. So still he has great condition. Yeah. I mean, you look at the style in Japan and it really helps to preserve people's bodies to be able to work much later into their careers, right? Yeah. Most Japanese wrestlers uh, train uh, not only uh, lifting weight. Oh, like body weight instead? Uh, yeah. Also, the Nagara love to train kickboxing. What do you do to train now? You said you just finished at the gym before we hopped on here. How do you? What's your training schedule look like? I made a garage gym. then. Uh, before pandemic, uh, I tried to restart uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but uh, now still risky. So restart karate. Oh. I used to do karate uh, when I was uh, middle school, but uh, now I train different style of karate. How is it different? If I have a different style of uh, karate, it's black belt. If I join the new style of karate, I become white belt. Oh, you got to go right back to the beginning. No. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I, I, I'm enjoying to do karate now. So what drew you to surfing? Because you've been surfing for a long time now. You surfed in Japan before you came to Florida, right? Yeah. 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 So difficult to, uh, how to explain. Depends on condition of weather, condition of uh uh, surface of the ocean, swell, it's so difficult. That's why I feel uh, fun a lot. Because every day would be different. So you have to adjust. I love that. You go out camping a lot too, right? You're like a, you're a real salt of the earth kind of guy. You're out camping, you're in the water, you're out making ramen in your backyard. You're doing all of the things. You're a busy man. When, uh, how often do you still get out camping? I didn't go camping this year i have a, a bw camper van last year 
uh, some uh, engine issue I found, then I took my car to the repairman shop. Still. It's still there? Still there. <laughs> oh my God. The guy in the shop called me a lot. Uh, please come to check your van. <laughs> then I asked him, did you fix it? No, please come here. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went to the shop. Then uh, I'm only the guy walking here. Oh my gosh. Oh, so, takes time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then. <laughs> well, I hope that you go get it and that you can get out and get a little camping done. Uh, my last question to you What would you want your retirement match to be against two? Retirement match against two? I mean, we're far away from you retiring. Let's not get crazy. I'm just doing some fantasy booking. I want to wrestle uh, Tanahashi again. Ooh, yes. We'll put that out into the world. You got to manifest that. Make that happen. Uh, also, that I want to I wanna wrestle uh, like a rising star, like a new guy. Yeah. Who? I don't know yet. Not sure. Keep an eye out. Okay. So you need to, you need to think about what you want to do when you don't want to wrestle anymore and who the future stars are going to be. You've got some time to think about those. Plenty of time. I'm still struggling in uh, wrestling. Do you feel that you're struggling? Yes, still. Why? Coming to US and coming to WWE is uh, challenging. I came to challenge myself. That's why I'm here. What do you think are the things that you need to improve upon? to get the success that you're looking to have. I mean, you've been able to do so much already. I mean, you've won a Royal Rumble. You've been able to go on and main event a WrestleMania. You've had a ton of success, but it's not the success that you're looking for. I'm waiting to find right timing or right moment. Is there somebody that you see that you would have a really great feud with? Uh, not yet. I can, I can wrestle anybody. What are your like conversations with Vince like? I, I don't pitch ideas to him a lot. We talk only after the match a little bit or uh, before the match. Uh, if he have the idea for my promo. It's hard to pick Vince's brain at TV sometimes because he's so busy with so many different things. It's really hard to get that time sometimes to feel like you can develop that relationship and, and have that quality time with with Vince. It can be difficult. I need to get used to that. Yeah, it's not easy. I had a hard time with it too. I, I hear you. It sucks. It's not easy. But you've had a lot of success and you know you have a huge fan base and everyone everyone loves them some Shinsuke Nakamura. So I think everyone else is also waiting for what that time is going to be and what that moment is going to be. And I think you you're going to have a lot of people really supporting you when that happens. How's your how's your How's your belly? Five more weeks or four more weeks. Wow, soon. It's so soon. I know. I'm like ready for my water to break at any moment. Scary. <laughs> it's not happened yet. I know it, it is a little scary. Oh my gosh. She's got to come out, right? Keep your placenta. I'm going to. I'm going to have it put into pills. Or uh, make the steak. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that. I have heard that. I don't know that I'm brave enough for that, but I am going to have it put into pills. One of my friends in Mexico, so she's Japanese. She and her family, her kids, ate her placenta with soy sauce and wasabi. Oh my gosh. Like sushi style? Did they cook it? Yes. Oh my gosh. I've heard of people doing that. And I know that there's like really great benefits um, for postpartum and just your hormone levels and all the nutrients that are in your uh, placenta, but chewing it seems scary. I don't think I want to chew my placenta. <laughs> I'll take the pills though. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. I won't be cooking it in the backyard. <laughs> All right, Shinsuke, thank you for coming on. It was so good to see you. And uh, yeah, looking forward to all the things that you're still going to be able to do in WWE and keep crushing it. Thank you.